Hello everyone, Jeff here to talk about finding future value and present value using continuous compounding. As a reminder, when we are using not continuous compounding, you may remember the formula that looks something like this, where you find the future value by taking the amount and multiplying by 1 plus the interest rate and raising to the t, where t represents time. We could use this if uh, interest were compounded annually. We could make some adjustments to figure out how to compound semi-annually or quarterly or monthly or daily using that formula. Continuous compounding means we go even further beyond daily and just assume that the interest is, con is compounding all the time, not daily, not by the hour, not by the minute, not by the second, just continuously, which sounds like a weird concept, but it actually makes the formulas a lot easier to work with once you get used to them. So we do have a new equation for finding future value. It is uh, a e to the rt, where a is still the amount that you are concerned with, r is still the interest rate, t is still time, and E is a constant approximately equal to 2.718 that we're not going to worry about that value since we're going to use Excel and it has that value built in. So that's straight what we're going to look at here. In Excel, the formula would be to type equal sign A, the amount you're interested in, times EXP. EXP represents E raised to the so uh, you'll notice in the formula we don't need an exponent sign here because the formula in Excel assumes the thing after it is an exponent. So the EXP here represents the E raised to a power in the formula. We will always open parentheses that will keep the R and the T together in the exponent so that Excel knows that uh, it belongs together with this. Uh, that's very important. Always open parentheses after the EXP formula uh, and R times T and close parentheses. This will make a thousand times more sense with an example and the example involves a thousand dollars. So in the example it says we are going to take one thousand dollars and invest it for three years at five percent interest and the assumption here is compounded continuously and we got Excel right here. So we have equals A, the amount, 1,000, times EXP for the E raised to the open parentheses. The rate is 5%. We do need to enter that as a decimal, 0.05 times time, which in this case is 3. Close parentheses, enter it tells us that the future value will be $1,161.83. Now I'm always a big fan of doing a gut check to make sure that your answer at least is in the realm of making sense. Um, if we were to consider this same example except compounded annually instead of continuously, uh, this is $1,000 at 5% interest. 5% interest is about $50, and it's three years, and so if there were no compounding at all, it would be $150 worth of interest. Uh, that would be uh, $1,150, and so because of compounding, $1,161 seems to make sense. It's not a guarantee that your answer is correct. We, we know it's correct because we did it correctly for the example, but uh, when, you get an ex when you get an answer and you at least spot check it to make sure that it makes some sense, you know you haven't done it completely wrong. Like if the answer here were $900, you know that's wrong. There's no way $1,000 becomes $900 after being invested at a positive amount. So spot check is always good. We have another example here to make sure we know what the best thing to do is when we're talking about fractions of years. Uh, so in this case we have $5,000 invested for seven months at 9% interest. Same equation, we take the amount 5,000, we multiply by e raised to the, which is exp, open parentheses, 
uh, the interest rate is 9% 0.09 times time time is in years here and the best thing to do is to say that it is 7 divided by 12 years sure you can do 7 divided by 12 excuse me <clears throat> in a separate um, cell and then carry that number over but then there may be rounding uh, and we don't want to deal with that now if it were six months that's half a year and you could put in 0.5 here and not worry about it but if it's something like seven months or eight or something and you don't want to worry about figuring that out separately you can just put it in like this it is seven twelfths of a year and uh, that five thousand two hundred sixty nine dollars and fifty one cents all right let's take now a look at present value with continuous compounding so in this case we're going to receive an amount in the future and we want to know how much that is worth now discounting it back to present value it is precisely the same procedure except that instead of the equation being e to the rt it is e to the negative rt and in excel again it's exactly the same except we just need to throw a negative sign in there and to do an example here it says uh, a 200 dividend dollar dividend will be received six months from now when the risk-free interest rate is four percent which again we're going to assume is continuously compounded so we are going to take the amount 200 we are going to multiply by e raised to the, or in Excel, exp, open parentheses, negative. The interest rate is 4%, and the time is 6 months from now. And again, you can choose whether to do 6 over 12, or you can do just 0.5 for half a year. Either way, the answer you will get is that the 200 dividend, dollar dividend received 6 from, months from now is worth 19604 that is worth less than $200 because we are discounting that amount to present value